Okay, welcome to this uh, Substance Painter tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to bring a couple of layers together and expose one under the other using a mask editor. So first of all uh, I've gone to File and Open Samples. I'll discard that and I'm just loading the preview sphere in. <coughs> and then I delete all of the layers that come with that just to give me a starting point. <coughs> And then I'm going to want two layers. So I'm going to have two fill layers. Uh, one will be my metal layer. And then the other one will be my uh, paint layer. Oops. Okay, so on the metal, uh, I'm going to use perhaps one of the uh, steels. So I'm just typing in steel in the filter. And with that selected, I can click on steel rough and it will apply it can't see it at the moment because we've got the paint layer above it just turn that off we'll see and then above that um, I'll put a plastic as a kind of you know starter for our material <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry about that bit of a, a frog in my throat right so we've got two layers and what we want to do is kind of um, use them to build a material and we want you know, to see the metal through uh, our, our paint layer. So what we do for that is we add in a black mask and that because it's black it's completely uh, empty mask is just showing the uh, the metal now and then on that black mask uh, we'll add a generator and in that generator we'll click this little generator thing here and we're going to use the mask editor okay so you'll see immediately um, it's coming through and it's showing some of the blue of the of the paint layer over there but it's the wrong way around I want to kind of show metal on the edges and paint everywhere else uh, so for that we'll hit invert and then we'll start to adjust our parameters so with the uh, mask editor you have all sorts of parameters to uh, to play with so we've got the global blur and a balance see the balance there is increasing our uh, increasing our mask and then we could we could blur it or uh, take the blur out let's just take that down a little bit and we also have a contrast to see how you know how many how sharp our uh, mask is going to be uh, underneath that we have texture and texture 2 which we'll get to in a moment uh, but then we're going to use ambient occlusion curvature and our normals to to change the way our mask behaves so for the curvature uh, this is going to say how much our curvature map is influencing our mask so if I increase it the curvature um, effect increases if I decrease it, it goes away as you can see most of it's coming from the curvature at the moment um, so ambient occlusion again we can increase and decrease and we get a little bit of effect there as we uh, slide up and down uh, world space normal uh, that's basically its position in you know in the universe in the in space um, if we increase that you'll see it's starting to come down from the top so it, it's saying right, I want this to be worn more on the top than I do you know, on the bottom so you can adjust that to your uh, liking uh, position gradient is uh, quite similar if we increase that uh, but that's the position in its kind of local space rather than in world space and then we have the thickness map and we can change the opacity on that to show how you know how much the thickness is going to affect our mask so all of our maps are down here uh, they're pre-baked in this particular scene the uh, the ball uh, the <laughs> preview sphere so you don't have to do anything uh, with those uh, but I wanted to introduce the textures so the texture adds then to our mask to our our curvature etc 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 and we can find our textures in the textures bin here 
and I'm just going to type in grunge to get some uh, selections out. Uh, we can drag and drop any of these black and white masks into our textures 1 and 2. We're just going to use one for now. And I'm going to drag and drop that over there. And that will now start to have an effect on our um, on our mask itself. So with the texture, uh, if the opacity is at zero, it won't do anything. But as you can see, as I raise it up, it becomes more and more prominent in the uh, in the viewport in the mask. And if we open up texture, uh, we have all sorts of options to change the way it works. So I can invert. Uh, we can take our uh, grayscale uh, conversion to uh, different levels. Uh, we can increase and decrease the scale. Well, we can't really go uh, smaller than uh, zero, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, we can change the contrast of the map and the brightness. See that has quite an effect. It's quite a nice effect. Uh, we can change it from uh, being projected to being triplanar. Um, so if I click that, we should uh, see what that does. And you know that helps us to hide seams and such like. Uh, what else have we got? Ah, then it's just the opacity. So that's our map without our texture in. That's our map with it in. And I think you'll agree that it's much nicer with it. Okay, so uh, that is essentially it. Uh, I'll just finish this off a little bit. So I'm going to go to my uh, paint layer and I'm going to turn on height. Whoops. And then just increase the height a little bit so it's got a little bit of depth to it. There we go. And then let's change the colour. So um, I wanted to do like a military kind of paint over steel. So in my uh, Pure F, I've got some army greens. So if I click on the base color and then click and hold on this little uh, eyedropper, I can come up here and pick whichever of these I want. There we go, we'll use that one. Let's uh, minimize that. Whoops, there we go. There we are. So if you wanted to extend this, you know you can add more and more layers to it um, but I just wanted to show you you know the mask editor and you know how that works and how it can really help you um, you know bring things together and start to build up your textures uh, so I hope you enjoyed that video um, I'll talk to you again soon